This is problem 20 from chapter 4. And we have the following circuit. Um, we have a current, a current dependent source with a value 5 times I0. This is your I0. It's current through the 40 ohm resistor. And it's connected to 20 ohms, which is connected to 5 ohms and uh, 40 ohms here. Again, current through through this this branch current is called I0. And we have, I think that's a 10. Yep. That's a 10. That's 10 ohms there. Um, this is 5. And we have a dependent voltage source with value 11 and a half times this I0. Four ohms is here, and a 96 volt uh, independent voltage source. And we want to find V1, which is this voltage, V2, which is this one, and V3, which is this one, for part A. And we also want to find the total power that's dissipated by the system in part uh, for part B. Okay. So well, let's begin. Whenever you have something that is dependent on something else, like in this case you have a current source that's dependent on this I0, and you have a voltage source that's also dependent on this I0, the first thing that you want to do is define that relationship. So I'm going to define, oh, and obviously this is an obvious ground, but um, we're going to define I0. I0 is V2 over 40, right? Okay, so, but I have limited to board space. I'm going to park that relationship right here. I0 equals V2 over 40. So whenever I see that I0, I am going to redefine it like that. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and re rewrite this at, in terms of the I0. So that current source is really 5 times I0 which is V2 over 40, 5 into 40 is 8, so I0 is really, or 5 I0 is really 1 8 V2. The other one, 11 and a half I0, that is going to be, let's see, escape. 11.5 times divided by 40. It's going to give me 0 0.2875 0 V2. And I might as well put, eh, I don't really care. Uh, I don't care to put this in decimals or fractions. I just make some around and let my calculator do the, the hard work. Okay, so now that we have everything in terms of V1, V2, and V3, we can go ahead and simply do node voltage equations. So we take node voltage at V1, this node right here, that gives us this current, which is 5 I0. We already said 5 I0 is V2 over 8, so that's going to be V. In fact, I'm going to just put that here, side note, V2 over 8. This is really 0.2875 V2, and this is really V2 over 40. So the voltage at V1 is V2, V2 plus um, V1 over 20 plus V1 minus V2 over 5. All those currents sum up to zero. Remember, node voltage is KCL, so it should always be voltage over resistance, which gives you current. If you have just voltage, then you're doing something wrong. Okay, so now we're going to make things easy by our matrix and group all our numbers. We have V1, V2, V3, so V1, what do I have? I have a 120 V1. I also have this, which is 1 fifth. 1 fifth. And then over here, for V2 plus V2, I have negative 1 fifth. I'm just setting things up by moving the coefficients out. I'm setting things up for a 3 by 3 matrix because I expect to have three equations and three unknowns. And do I have any V1? 
B3s. I have zero B3s, plus so be times zero plus equal to zero. Okay, and let me double check one fifth, negative one eighth up. I am missing a V2 right here, so this should be negative one fifth plus one eighth. This one right here, and a V2 right here, so let me double check. Negative V2, oh, okay, current into a node minus V2. Okay, sorry, I've been up since four in the morning, so I'm not fully awake yet, but I did do this last night. So one negative one fifth minus one eight, V, okay. So now my matrix is starting to look like this. This is a node a V1, V2, B3 equals, and the first part here from the first equation, I have 120 plus 1 fifth. For V2, I have negative 1 fifth minus 1 eighth. I have 0 here and equals the zeros there. Okay, so now I'm going to work on my second equation, which is the second node voltage at V2. So, node voltage at V2 gives me. This branch current, V2 minus V1 over 5, plus this branch current, which is I0, which is V2 over 40, plus this branch current, which is V2 minus V3 over 10. All those sum up to 0. Now, again, I'm going to do put my coefficients together. Okay, so for V1, what do I have? I have a negative one fifth here. Do you have any other V1? No, that's the only thing I have for V1. For V2, I have a one fifth here, 140, and a 110. And for V3, I have, no, 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 yes, negative 110 and no constants. And I will simply double check here. Negative one fifth, one fifth, one forty, one ten, negative one ten, zero. Okay, that's my second one. So now I have three, two equations, three unknowns. I need a third equation, which we will get by doing KCL at note V three. So it's going to be this branch one is V three minus V two, V three minus V two over ten plus this branch current is tricky because you can do this point minus here, so V3, this branch current is V3 minus 0 0.2875 V2, which is what we said 11.5 I0 was, and that's going to be over 5, and that's that branch current, and then plus the last branch current is going to be three V3 minus 96, and that's going to be over 4. Those sum up to 0. Now, Let's put that into our matrix equation. V1, look for my V1s. I have zero V1s. And for V2, I have a negative 110 here. No. And I have negative 0 0.2875 divided by 5. And that's all the V2s that I have. V3, I have 110. And I have one fifth, and I have one fourth, and for constants I have 90, neg negative 96 four, which I'm going to bring to the other side of the equation, and that's going to be 96 over four. So that is my matrix, and I'll put it into my matrix application. But I'm going to check to make sure that my matrix is correct. 0, negative 110, negative 2875 over 5, 110, 1 fifth, 1 96, 4. Okay, put that into your calculator, your simultaneous equation solver. You should come up with V1 is 156 volts, V2 is 120 volts, and V3 is 78 volts. Okay, so now we know that this is 156. 156 volts. This is 120 volts. 
and this is 78 volts. We can solve for some of these values, right? So we know that I naught then is going to be uh, V2 over 40. V2 is 120, so I naught is going to be I naught is 3 amps. And uh, 5 I naught then is going to be 120 over 8. Let's see what that is. 120 divided by 8. It's going to give me 15 amps. Oops. Yeah, that's right. 5 I naught, I naught. 5 times, yeah. And uh, the 15, I 11.5 I naught is going to be 3 times 11.5. It's going to give me 34.5 volts. Okay, so we have all these values. Um, we can go ahead and find the power dissipated. So let's take a look at this power right here. So the power. Power dissipated by the 5i naught, piece of 5i naught, is going to be the 5i naught times the, five, the value, this current times v1, right? Because it's going into that node. So that means this is 3 amps. Actually, it's negative 3 amps times v1, which is 156. So what does that give me? Okay, so negative three, negative three, uh, negative fifteen, negative three times five times. That's gonna give me two. Negative, sorry, five times negative three times one fifty six. It's gonna give me negative twenty three forty watts that is delivering, that current source is delivering power to the circuit. So, let's do the next circuit element, P20, is going to be VI, so V squared over R, V1 squared over 20, which is, V1 is 156, so 156 squared over 20 will give you 20, 12, 16 .8. Watts. Piece of 5 ohms. This one right here is going to be 156 minus 120, right? Because the difference, the drop across here is 156 minus 120 squared is V squared over R times 5 divided by 5, which will give me 259.2. P, so let's do this one right here. So P sub 40 ohms going to give me 120 squared, 120 squared over 40, and that's going to give me 360 watts. P sub 10 ohms, this guy right here is going to be 120 minus 78 squared over 10. So P sub 10 ohms is 120 minus 78. Um, squared over 10. I'm running out of space, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a table here. Um, circuit element will go element. Um, uh, well, I'll just do power. Okay. Dis uh, um, actually, I'm going to build a table here what the values of the dissipated and delivering. So a circuit element is either dissipating a charge or is delivering, a, a, a dissipating power or delivering power, right? If it's negative, it's delivering power. So I know that 2340 is being delivered by, let's just give it a circuit element, 5I0. That's the circuit element. And the 20 ohm resistor is using up 1216.8 watts. The 5 ohm resistor is using up 
259.2, the 40 ohm resistor is using up 360. And the 10 ohm resistor so far is using up 176.4 watts. So now I get to this point here. That's my tally so far. Now I get to this one here, and the voltage drop across that is going to be V3, which is 78, right? Minus 0.2875 V2, which we said is 34.5 volts. We calculated that earlier. Square that, and over 5, that gives me 120 minus, da, 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 that will give you 378. So across the 5 ohm resistor, we have 378.45. And then we need to know what is the, the voltage drop across this, the 11.5. That's going to be VI, right? Well, we know this is going to be uh, 34.5 volts. We calculated that. But what is the I? The I is going to be the current across here, which is going to be this minus this, that voltage drop, divided by 5. So that's going to be 78 minus 34.5 over 5. This is the V. This is the I. See that? This is V over R. So that power then, V sub 5 ohms, uh, is going to give you... Let me see, 78 minus 34.5 divided by 5 times 34.5. Going to give you 300, yeah, where is that? So then this is going to give you 315. So. The 11.5 I naught is going to give you 300.15 watts that it's using. And um, then the, the power dissipated by the 4 ohm resistor is going to be 78 minus 96. This is V squared over R that I'm using over 4. Put that into your calculator and you'll come up that the 4 ohm resistor is burning up 81 watts of power. And then the last circuit element is going to be the 96, 96 volts. So that's just P is equal to VI. So V, we know is 96 volts. What's I? I is going to be 78 minus 96 over 4. And when you put that into your calculator, you will come up with negative 432. Negative means that it's delivering power to the circuit. Now, when you add up all the about on this side, you should come up with total power delivered to the system is 2772. 27, 2772, right? And it better equal what is dissipated. So when we add everything up, and I'll just double check before I say that, 1216.8 plus 259.2 plus 360 plus 176.4 plus 378.45 plus 300.15 plus 81, you come up with 2272. So power dissipated equals power developed. And, um, power delivered. So the answer to part B is 2772.